decided to approve plans to reopen the border to foreign travellers, despite warnings from scientific advisers that the move posed a clear public health risk. Yes, from Monday, millions of fully vaccinated passengers from the US and the EU, including countries on the amber list, will be able to enter England, Scotland and Wales without spending up to 10 days in quarantine. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab joins us now. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, so this all takes effect on Monday. There are obviously these real concerns about the consequences of it, these warnings that it poses a real, a clear public health risk. So are you confident that this is the right move? Yes, I think so, um, because we're confident because we've taken all the advice we've had. There, there's always, as we've gone through this pandemic, one or other uh, individual from uh, either end of the spectrum who thinks we're doing too much or too little. What we're saying is in relation to two high trust partners, the EU and the US, uh, where their regulators have, va have licensed uh, reliable vaccines and the individuals are double vaccinated and they can demonstrate it, that they can, so in relation to the US and European countries and people vaccinated with reliable vaccines, they can come to this country. And I think it's part of that steady, incremental, but sure-footed opening up internationally now that we're opening up domestically. And it's all underwritten by the confidence that we derive from having 70% of our adult population having received two jabs. So I think we can move uh, confidently forward. Yes, but we don't want to risk it, do we, and have to take a step back. It is a bit worrying that you say you think it's the right move, that we feel that there isn't that confidence there. And I think there are particular worries, aren't there, about introducing different types of vaccines that perhaps aren't quite as effective and also the risk of what new variants might be brought into this country that could then put the vaccination programme, put the gains that we've made at risk. Well, I am confident that we're taking the right step in the way I described. I agree with you, we need to be careful, and this is a sure-footed step. But just on reliability of vaccines, that's why we're doing this arrangement with a high-trust partner in the US and indeed the EU, partners that we exchange information with, that we trust um, uh, uh, to, to be able to cooperate on this kind of matter effectively. And of course, in relation to would we let in those with unreliable vaccines, we will only allow those who have been double jabbed, if you like, with EMA uh, approved vaccines in the EU. Um, so if it's one or other of the uh, Chinese or Russian vaccines which have not been EMA approved, they wouldn't be allowed in. <clears throat> and in likewise in the US, it would have to be FDA-approved vaccines. So we have that level of assurance, plus the checks that we can do with the different uh, forms of identification and certification that will be provided, so, whether it's from the EU or the US. So, Dominic, what will uh, foreign travellers have to do when they arrive here in the UK in terms of testing? Well, the the um, the the testing um, uh, at, at I think it's day two would still uh, apply. But the crucial thing is that we've got the reassurance, and that the, so the, the, the key thing is they don't need to isolate. Um, but they'll also I, I wasn't clear where you were talking about PCR testing or the checks on the certification. But there will obviously be checks on the EU uh, certification that would be done digitally. And in relation to the US, which is a, a card-based system, there'll be a double check of that. Uh, certification along with the residency uh, proof that will be provided for American travellers. It's I mean, not it's... reciprocal though, is it? Mm. I mean, how disappointed are you that that wasn't sorted out as well? There will be so many families here in this country who haven't been able to see loved ones in the US for some time now. Have you spoken to your counterpart? When can we expect that move to be brought in on the other side as well? So it's not reciprocal in relation to um, the US, but of course the majority of European countries it would be. Um, we're proceeding confidently. I think we're showing some leadership here. But what, and of course we want to work through reciprocal uh, arrangements with the US as soon as possible. But and uh, I've had conversations with my opposite number. The uh, President Biden raised it with the Prime Minister um, at the G7. So we'll work through all of those arrangements. Ultimately, countries have got to feel confident enough to proceed. It's not just us in relation to the US. They've got these arrangements with uh, most countries. Uh, around the world. And of course, what you find when you take uh, confident steps as we've done is that countries will come to us and say, OK, can we get on the same list as the Europeans and the Americans? Can we work something through reciprocally? I can tell you that overnight, I won't say which, uh, but overnight I've already had messages from uh, my opposite numbers in, in one or other country saying, can we talk about this because uh, we want to proceed with you? So I think it will create, uh, if you like, a virtuous cycle moving forward. And it's right we do it um, in a way which has got these checks and these reassurances so that we pursue, proceed um, steadily but surely.
Uh, we're opening up from Monday and then on the 16th of July, if you are double vaccinated here in the UK or under 18, uh, you don't have to self-isolate. And also taking a test is going to be your own choice. Uh, it, these two things coming together. I mean, it seems like testing is the best way forward to ensure that we keep the spread of the coronavirus at, at a minimum. But with people being able to roam freely and take the choice as to whether they do a test or not, I mean, surely this is could be potentially dangerous. Yeah, just in terms of the end of the test and trace for those double vaccinated, I think you said 16th of July. Of course, it will be 16th, right, 16th of August. August yeah. 16th of August. Um, but look, there's been lots of criticism of the pandemic and all the rest of it. I think what we know with... 70% uh, of the country uh, adult population double vaccinated, that we're now in a good position to take that step forward. We've always wanted to have uh, combinations of test and trace um, and, and the potential for isolation um, as backups if people either get the virus or uh, uh, get, the, get, get co uh, contact or have been in contact with someone with the virus. But we can take that further step forward. But this is all underwritten by the success of the vaccine rollout. And what we now need to show and demonstrate is those who haven't, for whatever reason, uh, stepped up to have the, the jab. Come and do it. It's working. You can have confidence in it. It is making uh, your life better, um, safer, it making the lives of your family, your friends, uh, your colleagues at work better. Um, so hopefully what you see is not just the, the raw statistics, but um, uh, a growing confidence that seeps through across the population that actually this is the direction of travel that they can trust and have confidence in. And then if they were a bit nervous, step up now, get that appointment, get that double vaccination. Do you agree with uh, Michael Gove, who says that those who don't have the vaccine are selfish? Sophie, the way I'd say it is, is, look, get the vaccination because it's in your own interests, but also it's in the interests of your family, your community and the country as a whole. That's the way I'd frame it. OK, it's Charlotte, by the way. Just sorry, so sorry. You know. That's OK. <laughs> I'll let you off just this once. Um, let's move on to the situation in France because uh, there's a lot of people obviously wanting to go on holiday to France. They're still working out the, you know, what will happen, whether they can get there, what's going to happen on the way back. At the moment, travellers coming back still have to quarantine when they return because of the beta variant. But if we look at the statistics for that, the numbers have declined. It was 14% in the second half of June. It's now, or it was most recently, 5% up to the 12th of July. When is this going to change? Well, look, we monitor the evidence very carefully. You'll know that there are concerns around the beta variant, not just in La Réunion, uh, uh, part of France, but also in the north of the country. This is monitored regularly and the JBC will review, the Joint Biosecurity Centre will review the evidence as they, they do uh, at the next review point, which will be next week. We obviously want to get as many countries up the amber and green list, but we can only do so when the evidence backs it up and we can do so, as I said, in a confident, sure-footed way. But that review point takes place next week. And is there a chance that, uh, you know, Spain and Greece may be put on the amber plus this? Obviously, we're opening up from Monday to let people in, uh, but we're also going to make it difficult for those in this country that have chosen to book a foreign holiday and may have to cancel because they can't afford to self-isolate for 10 days on their return. Well, look, there's no, um, this isn't something that is being jumped on people in terms of a system. The system has always been, we have a traffic light system uh, in the way that we've discussed and the evidence is reviewed regularly and we have review points. The next one will be uh, next week, as I said. You, you can't ask me to jump the gun because I need to see the evidence and then ministers will ultimately decide. But we've got an evidence-based process and I think that's the right thing to do, precisely as I was asked um, by Charlotte, I think, earlier in this interview, so that we take steps forward and we don't then uh, subject ourselves to the risk of uh, of variants or uh, letting in people from higher higher risk countries. So it's difficult. I know it's been uncertain planning holidays this year. I know that's been inconvenient for so many people. We've just tried to do this in a way which is sure-footed, steady and irreversible. OK, we'll have to leave it there. But Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Talk to you.